We've got some great feedback on our video on installing and running RS Logics, RS Links, and RS Emulate. And someone recently asked if we could make a video on control panels that wasn't so boring. No. But maybe we can make one that sucks a little less. This is the front of our panel. We have a disconnect for shutting the power off. We're using a red line HMI. This is a wastewater system, so we're representing kind of our wastewater system and showing values in various states of our blowers and pumps. If you're interested in learning more about this, just put something in the description. Maybe we'll do a video on HMIs. Got alarm silence. We got an e-stop. Make sure you use a lighted e-stop. That way we can figure out why the machine's not running. Here is your basic control panel. It has a disconnect. Your power goes into your disconnect. Usually you'll have some fuses, sometimes it's a circuit breaker, then all the rest of your equipment is downstream of it. That way you can disconnect your power when you need to work on it. Now from there, it looks a little confusing because it goes into the wire duct here, but here are the wiring diagrams we use to wire this one. As you see on page C01, we have a transformer, and this is our transformer. Now our transformers are not as cool as the ones in the movies, but they're still very important and very cool because even in North America, we have varying voltages. We have 483 phase, we have 243 phase, 240. Single phase, we have uh, 208, then there's probably a bunch of others. But what a transformer does is it converts one voltage to another voltage. So if I put my voltmeter on 600 volts, I can test the top of this one. And you see we have 480 volts. And coming out of our transformer, which is here on the bottom, we have 120 volts. So this transformer is converting 480 to 120. So here are two 24 volt power supplies. So here where we took it from 480 to 120, this has 120 going into it. And check the other side, I will need to switch to DC voltage. And there I have 24 volt. We use the 24 volt to power everything that is in the field. Now the field is everything external of this control panel. So all of our switches, our sensors, anything like that, anything that is out where people might touch it will be 24 volt. Now, I always say don't touch it if it's live, but 24 volt is safer than 120. Moving on to sheet D01, you will see all of our motors. And here is the motor starter. So this actually is sheet D01. Each motor starter has an overload that will trip the motor if it goes over its current late rating. And here is the starter. And when you hear this clicking on and off, that's when the motor's clicking on and off out in the field. I'm not going to go through every component of the wire diagrams because that would make for a very boring video. But this is the PLC. It is the brains of the operation that reads inputs from out in the field and controls the outputs that control, say, these motor starters right here. Uh, we've already been over the power supplies. Obviously, there was the transformer. Here's an Ethernet switch, just like you would have in your house. Uh, we actually even have a router here with a USB cellular modem, and this allows it to transmit data and alarms out to the internet. These are basic circuit breakers, just like you'd have in your house. Motor starters, grounding, ground, 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 ground. I know it doesn't seem like that ground wire does anything, but ground anyway. And if you're not sure, go ahead and ground. Here are some little miniature relays, exact same of these motor starters, except where they're just going to switch on molar loads. To make our wiring a little easier, we use pre-wired arms to bring all this wiring here down to here so the installer will have a point to hook all of his inputs up. Here's all our outputs. This is 4 to 20 analog and then what it does is it kind of reads say like a tape measure. So whereas these inputs here are on off, this right here can read a varying signal. So maybe we're measuring a tank level, maybe we're measuring pressure, pH, conductivity, various things like that. But uh, each one of these has an individual fuse. While this is a little more advanced, don't let it scare you. Just look at um, our YouTube section, you'll see some videos about our analog simulator and it describes us really well. If you have fuses, make sure you have spare fuses. This is DIN rail, which everything through here and here is actually mounted to. It really saves you a lot of time. Now, DIN rail is an acronym for something. It's German, and if this is a real class, we tell you what it was. But you can take any device that's DIN rail mountable. Here we're using our analog simulator, and you hook the top, and it just snaps over like that. This is wire duct. Every panel needs wire duct. If you have a small panel, it needs wire duct. If you have a big panel, it needs wire duct. Put wire duct in your panel. You're getting it, guys. But it is a way to hide all of our wires. Sometimes you might say all of our messes. But if we did not have this, we would have a huge balled up mess. So it helps us keep everything tidy. I hope this video has been helpful and not too boring. If there's something you'd like to learn about, just put it down in the comments. We'll see if we can make a video about it. Till next time.
Hi, this is Tim. And this is Amber. We run the automation store. Be sure to visit our support section for more great articles and videos. And view our line of PLC cables and trainers, simulators, repair services, surplus inventory, charity auctions, and more.